Greetings and welcome to a new video about rectifier circuits. This is our example about the full-way rectifier having a resistive load. We will see step by step the required calculations for our parameters and also verify these in MATLAB simulink simulations. So before we move on with our example, I will briefly illustrate the topologies for our full-way rectifier. One of them is the bridge. We have here four diodes instead of one where we have in the half a rectifier you see here the input which is through the transformer connected to this bridge configuration and then to the load which is in this case pure resistive so if your input is pure sine wave your output will be if everything is ideal the waveform like so so it will be actually the absolute value of your input voltage so we require four diodes so that is compared to the half a rectifier three more we also have the following situation during the positive half of the input cycle that is actually the following that you have the d1 and the d2 are conducting so they are forward biased and the d3 and d4 are reverse biased so they are open that means actually the following in our circuit so this is the current flow the pink one you see actually the green ones for the diodes are forward biased and these two are reverse biased so you see the first part of the period and that is also replicated in the output. Now, in it, for the negative half of the input cycle, you have that the D3 and the D4 are forward biased, so they are conducting, but D1 and D2 are reverse biased. And then you have the following current flow, and what you see is that the negative peak of the input voltage will be again passed through this configuration of this bridge circuit, but the output will be again in the same direction, so you get exactly as described, you get the absolute value of your input at the output and the average value of the output voltage will be given by this so that will be then two times the peak value over pi and that is given here pictorially so you have your peak value and the average value will be a little bit lower than that one the other configuration is called the center tapped and here you have a transformer also but that is center tapped at the secondary side in this case you need two diodes so you don't need four diodes but in this case you need two diodes that means you have then also addition the transformer required so let's see in detail what's happening here you have the primary side and also the secondary side for the secondary side you have the voltages which are the half of the primary side but they are also inverted so this is in phase with the input and this is out phase with the input the primary side so requires two diodes as said before and also the center tapped transformer and also during the half uh, positive half of the input cycle you get the d1 is forward biased but d2 is reverse biased so you get actually this current flow so this is green d1 is on d2 is off and in the negative part of the cycle d2 is on but d1 is off and then you get this cycle again you get the absolute value of the input and the output and the formula for the average value is the exact same so this is just the same uh, expression also the same plot as for a bridge rectifier now after this brief discussion of the bridge and the uh, center tap configuration for a full wave rectifier let's jump now to the actual discussion actual example we have now here the voltage source vs which is given by this expression 170 sine 120 pi t we have a pure resistive load of 18 ohms and we'd like to calculate these parameters for this circuit so before we want let's also look at the waveform this is a pure sine wave for our input remember that this is now omega t which is convenient for our power calculations this is the vo which is the absolute value of the output voltage or the load voltage and this is the current which has exact same shape of course a different unit so let's go now to the calculations in our solutions before we jump to the calculations we convert this vs which is given in time domain in the omega t domain that's shown here in here we have that vm is 170 volts and the omega is 120 pi radians per second so this is then 60 hertz a the average load voltage first that is given by this expression what we recognize here is compared to the half rectifier is that the period is in this case a pi instead of 2 pi because the original period of the source voltage is 2 pi but if you look at the output now the period has changed so we get now a period of pi so the frequency s is also decreased by a factor of i mean increased by a factor of two so this is now the integral you need to also use but we have a vo here 
and VO is always VS because we assume that the diodes are ideal. So we can also say the VO is exactly equal to the VS. That's also shown here because this waveform is the exact same as that one. So we can also write the integral like so. We know what the VS is that is given here. So in general form, we can write like so. And if you now evaluate this integral by taking out the VM outside the integral, you get this expression and when you evaluate that, you get now two times the VM over pi, which is now the same formula actually as we have discussed briefly. Then we set here VP, but it's actually the same thing. We know that VM is 170, so you get now a two times 170 over pi, which is approximately 108.2 volts. Now the average load current is calculated using Ohm's law, just the average load current is average load voltage over resistors. We know that what the resistor is, so that it will be then 6.013 amps. And RMS load voltage is calculated using the definition for RMS uh, value, which is given by this. And again, the period here is pi, and you also integrate from zero to pi. Again, the output voltage, but the output voltage is also the source voltage, so you can also replace this VO by VS. That is given by this, so everything must be squared. So this is squared, this is squared. And we know that this expression is really familiar for pure sine wave RMS value calculations, and that is given by Vm over the square root of 2. And that is in this case 117 or 170 over square root of 2 will be 120.2 volts. RMS load current can be calculated again using Ohm's law because we know the RMS load voltage. So we use the resistor and that will give us 6.678 amps. Absorbed power is calculated using this formula, which is the absorbed power is equal to the RMS load voltage squared over R, or you can use the RMS load current squared times R. That will give you the exact same value. And that will be down here 802.8 watts. The power factor is defined as the true power, the dissipated power over the apparent power. And apparent power is given by the RMS value of the source voltage times the RMS value of the source current. Now the RMS value of the source current or the, just the source current is equal to the load current because they are in series. So it's the exact same as we have calculated in D. But the RMS source voltage is the amplitude of our source voltage over the square root of 2, which is 102.2 volts exactly as we had actually in question C. Now we need to multiply those two values for the voltage and the current in RMS for the source you get now here also 802.8 volt amperes. There will be maybe a small rounding off error, just really the rounding off error, but they are exact same. You can see that the power factor now will be here one. That is actually what you have ideally. Okay, now let's collect now the results here. We have now the six uh, solutions for this example. Let's go down to the simulations. This is the circuit drawn in the simulink used in Simscape elements. You see here that we have this diode configuration of four diodes. You see the resistor here of 18 ohms. With this one, amp, the, amp, the current sensor, you measure the current in this branch. You measure with this voltage, the voltage of this node, and this voltage sensor will also measure the voltage for the source. And this AC voltage source is this VS. We also wrap, uh, plot this or place it in the scope so you get actually the plots later and let's go now one by one to the values which you see on the display first one is the average load voltage is 108.2 which is exactly what we have calculated the next one is the average load voltage which is 6.013 amps also exactly as we have calculated the next one is the rms load voltage 120.2 volts so also as we have calculated in the rms load voltage Load, RMS load current, I must say, is 6.678 amps, which is also what we have calculated, so they're all checked. Let's also look at the waveforms. So this is the waveform, the red one is for the VS, the green one is for the V out, the load voltage, and the yellow one is for the output current, load current. What you see is actually that the uh, 170 volts, which you have here for the uh, red one, which is our input, is also same for the green one. And the current here also reaches the value divided by the, uh, the, uh, the resistor, which you have, which is 18. So the shape also of the output and also for the current is, as we have described, which is the absolute value of our input waveform.
All right, this is our example consolidating the full wave rectifier only having a resistive flow. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. See you next time in another video.